appreciate it. Happy Friday, everybody. Thanks for coming in today. Um, I'm going to kind of go over a lot of stuff. I, some people are like, man, you brag way too much. I'm like, well, I'm proud of what we do here, you know, and I always use the word we, it's not me doing it all. It's just, um, you know, I just keep bringing people in and, and sharing stuff. So that's sort of what we do around here. So I'm going to go through this kind of quick, but anytime, if you uh, want to stop me, go ahead, or we can continue this conversation later too. So, um, we are called the innovation lab makerspace at SPC. And um, my little slogan is dream, think, and create. I think that's a pretty fun thing. And we work with a lot of kids. And that picture that you see now is, uh, is one of my favorite ones. And we'll talk about the maker boot camp here in a little bit. But um, I just love that picture. Those kids are all into it. They're looking at a 360 degree photo that was shot down from Mars. And so that was pretty. So, so I always get the question of, well, how do you, how do you fund this? And I have no budget at all really um so all i've done is rolled up my sleeves and and i've written grants so um the saint petersburg college foundation has what's called an innovation grant and i've over the years since 2011 i've been awarded seven of these things um total i can't see the number now because the videos are over top of it but quite a bit um like 20 some odd thousand dollars worth which is great and then the first time uh, the grant, I got the money and I ended up buying a bunch of stuff and I didn't think far ahead and I, I didn't realize that we needed furniture and um, electrical outlets and internet ports, that kind of thing. And so luckily at that point, the provost was, thought it was a good idea and gave me an additional $6,000 for furniture and all that stuff. So that was, that was great. If at any point you want a copy of, of the grants I've written, I'll be happy to email them to you and feel free to... And it, yes, definitely. And just take what you want and, and uh, hopefully get something from it, right? Um, so the wish list comes true. You know, this is after the first grant. I went out and bought a bunch of stuff and we had a very big grand opening. We had two grand openings. One was, and this was about a little over, well, yeah, June 3rd, 2014. Um, so the media came out. Um, we got a good write-up in the, in the newspaper. Um, politicians were here leadership, you know, college leadership, all that stuff. So, but I always tell people this whole makerspace thing for me was the reason why writing the grants was it was uh, very selfish because I like to tinker with stuff. You know, I like to play, I wanted to learn 3d printing. I wanted to learn robotics. I wanted to, to play around with this stuff. Um, but I don't have the money to, to do it. So I'm like, I'm going to write a grant and bring all this stuff into a library, um, a college library, and then just share it with the group. And so that's what we've been doing and figuring it out as we go. Uh, I didn't have a big plan, um, and I still don't really. I mean, I just keep reaching out and trying to, to make it fun, you know, and, and to share technology and services and, and resources that people usually don't have access to. So that's been really great. Um, I do have a link down there um, as to what the Innovation Lab has. So if you're interested and you wanna kind of see, it's not, completely up to date because we, we keep getting a bunch of new things, but um, that link down there, and, and I will send Erica the link to my presentation so you can have all these links later. But it's a, it's a nice list of all the software and all the hardware that we have um, in the lab. Um, another question I get a lot is staffing. And it's interesting because you know I'm a full-time librarian and I also teach as an adjunct professor too. Um, so I've got all those duties, which I'm sure you guys can relate to, but then I also have this innovation lab now. Um, so it's open when I'm in here, um, or it's open when I have a volunteer. Um, I've had a few interns over the, over the years, which is great, because um, they get to come in here and just kind of tinker around and play, um, but also help other people tinker and play. Um, so volunteers do have to go through a level two security clearance um, if they are working with people under 18. And as you can see in the first picture, uh, we do work with, with younger kids, so they have to get a level two security clearance. We also have um, an iLab request form, so if somebody has a project that they want to work on and it's not open, you know, we don't have any set hours, they can send a request and then I'll make sure I'm here so they can work on it. So it's basically open whenever it, it needs to be open. Um, some of the great things, so a little background of the library. We are a joint use library. So we've got an academic and public, and that's great because then I get to work with students, college students. I also get to work with younger kids um, and adults and, and all that. So 
a while back we had um, a digital imaging class come in when they were learning about how to extrude uh, things in Illustrator. So they wanted to come in and learn about the 3D printer. So I had a nice digital imaging class come in and showed them how 3D printing works. And we always have um, little workshops. If somebody is, you know, um, working on, as you can see, the, the retro pie through Raspberry Pi, I'm like, hey, why don't you do a workshop and explain to people how you can do it yourself? And so that's what we do. Even if there's two people there, it's a way for us to share things that we've learned in the lab. Um, so some of the stuff that we've done, we've, we've done quite a few game development workshops, um, show them how to use Game Maker and work in Scratch and that kind of thing. And then we've done um, the Hour of Code. We've done quite a few of those. And a friend of mine, uh, quite the drone expert, he's done the intro to drone class for us. Um, very, very popular. Um, he goes out and shoots video and, and stuff from, from really high up, and that's very cool. Um, and we've done some Arduino workshops, uh, Little Bits workshops, right? And those are all really popular workshops. Um, so what this has done is it led me to this Maker Bootcamp idea because you know we've done all these workshops they started getting more and more popular then I started getting requests from the city rec center boys and girl scouts these different um, groups were like hey do you do any summer camps do you do any you know summer camps where we can bring our kids in and they can learn some of this stuff and that's what I said well let's do this maker boot camp so what we started doing is Every Friday for a while, we would start doing a class on video game design, 3D design and printing, fun with electronics and circuitry, uh, robotics, some virtual reality, and then we did video editing. Let me pull this down real quick. And if you really want to learn a lot more about it, I, I just wrote a, a blog post for Demco, and the link is right there. So it goes into all the details behind it. Um, but what's nice is, you know, we've got the technology in here. It forces me to write curriculum based around what we have. And it forces me to learn what we have. Enough, I don't know it at all. I know just enough, right, to do a nice little overview, let everybody know what the technology is capable of doing, and then letting them go with it. Like we've done robotics workshops before where I've had box, like robot kits in the box still that I didn't have a chance to go through. I put that on a table and say, hey, uh, open it up, figure it out, right? And the kids do, and the parents help, and it's just really a good way to, um, to kind of instill that curiosity and that, that quest to figure things out. Um, we are also thinking of doing, you know, help. Do you guys have Ikea, the stores up there, where you have to build, like, furniture and all this weird that stuff? I was thinking of hosting, you know, a workshop where we can help people put stuff together. Um, you know, especially around the holidays, that'd be a pretty good idea. Okay. Um, another thing I'm kind of really proud of is we did a Gadgets for Good initiative. And um, what we did is we collected over 2,000 pounds of electronics that people weren't using anymore, like old cell phones, old printers, old computers, quite a, quite a bit. So 2,000 pounds of this. And then one of our partners, eSmart Recycling, um, they collected it all. And then we were able to get 10 laptops out of it. So they, they kind of restructure these laptops and, and repurpose them for these types of things. They usually take this stuff out to third world countries, people, you know, places that don't have technology. And so that's a really great initiative, I think, is to be able to take the stuff that's collecting dust um, and to create, you know, to take whatever that is and make other laptops or other technology available for people. So... And that was quite a bit, and it was easy. All we did was set up boxes on campuses and people brought a bunch of stuff in. So it was pretty easy. Um, and then a couple years ago, I think it was probably two years ago now, um, America, uh, ALA and Walt Disney set up a grant and it was the Curiosity Creates grant. And what was interesting when we started reading through it, uh, it was like, it, was, it seems like they wrote it for us specifically for the Maker Bootcamp initiative. So um, the grant really did write itself. And so we were awarded uh, $7,500. So now I've got $7,500 to spend on even more stuff. Um, and so that was good. So again, 
10, every so far is all grant funded. So now I will say, you know, writing grants does take a lot of time and you have to pay close attention to the instructions. But once you've done one or two, I think it starts to get a little easier. Um, we did write a grant for Google um, earlier or late last year for a ready to code initiative, but we did not get the grant. And I was shocked because this, that was the first time we actually had the grant department from my college help do it. And it was a solid grant, but um, they never really gave us the rubrics to kind of to figure out exactly what they wanted. So it was, it was tricky for us, but anyway, so there's plenty of grant opportunities available out there. Now, a couple things I, I like to, we use Tumblr a lot um, and I try to document as much as I can. So whenever we do something in here, I'll take pictures. Um, it's more anecdotal evidence, even though my, um, you know, my director loves numbers. Like how many people did you see today? I'm like, well, there's a picture. I'm looking at 20 some odd kids right there. So the other day we had, um, two days last week, I had two different field trips come in. Um, one was, and it, actually they were both fourth grade. So they came in, we used two rooms. I had a bunch of them playing with circuits and, um, you know, snap circuits and little bits and stuff like that. And then had some of those e-smart recycling computers for them to do hour of code. Um, and then I had them come into the lab, which is where I'm sitting now and have some kids play with the synthesizer and the 3d printing you can see in our virtual reality stuff that they have. Um, and then you can see the big table, which, which is where I'm sitting. I don't think you can see it clearly. You'll see it in a little bit, um, where a lot of our, projects are. It's very, very messy, but I kind of like it that way. If it was perfectly clean, it would be, you know, we wouldn't be doing, you know? Um, and then the three pictures in the lower left, this is a project we're working on. This was grant funded also, where we're 3D printing tactile graphs um, for, so blind students can graph. They can kind of sense um, arcs and that kind of thing in, in math classes. So we're still, we're on part two. Now we, we actually tested it with a blind student the other day and got a lot of really great feedback. So that's what, that's what you're seeing there. Um, we do a, a lot of coding classes. Um, we, it was funny that the oscilloscope there, you can kind of see it behind me, it's huge. That was donated to as part of the Gadget for Good. Uh, actually, it was after the Gadget for Good. This was probably two months ago, somebody brought this in, and they were like, I don't want this anymore, do you, do you want it? And I was like, uh, yeah, yeah, and it still works. It's really cool. We connect our synthesizer to it and it gives us all these little lines and stuff to look at. It's really kind of fun. Um, the 3D, we, we 3D print a lot of stuff too. So the picture of me holding that clip, we worked with a, with a paramedic and a paramedic came in. He had an idea for a tablet clip holder thing that would go over the, um, the, uh, the beds not the beds, but the uh, stretchers. So when they were working on somebody, they can put that on there, those, those clips, and then put the, the tablet there and they can do whatever they need to do on the tablet. So he was able to come in and print his prototype out in, in the lab, which is great. Um, speaking of 3D printing, we're actually in the process of building our own 3D printer. So you can see that in that middle picture with the yellow in there. So we've printed out most of those parts. We've used an old PC power supply and that's gonna run it. And it's been, you know, we've learned quite a bit from it. Um, I also do faculty workshops uh, and the picture up at the top, um, I went out and I, I worked with 90 faculty that day, 40, diff, two different 45, or two sessions with 45 people each in it. And I brought a bunch of stuff and just kind of showed them um, what they can do with some of this technology. And some people I actually brought, I just brought index cards and some tape and a stuffed animal and we did some STEM activities that way too. So I show them you don't have to have the techie stuff. You know, you can actually, you can do things with index cards and teach STEM. So, um, so there's that. Also, it's a good idea to reach out to vendors and just say, hey, do you want us to test anything in our lab? Um, a lot of times people will send you stuff. So this is one example, um, uh, little friendly robots, I think they're called, um, or little robot friends they sent us six or eight robots and we were able to test them out and give them feedback. So it's a way for you to kind of test uh, technology without buying it. Um, and I know I'm going on and on and on and on, but this is just, I'm just kind of highlighting some of the stuff we do. Um, 
I also tell people that the lab is not in this room necessarily. It can be outside. It can be pretty much anywhere learning occurs. And so we have a STEM center. It was just recently opened and it's beautiful. It's outside and it's not too far from my campus. And we just started a butterfly garden. And so now we bring kids in there all the time. They can kind of observe what's going on and, and have field notebooks and that kind of thing. And they learn all about scientific observation and that kind of thing. And it's, it's really kind of a fun thing. And, and, and these butterflies lay eggs and then create and then, you know, be caterpillars and then become uh, beautiful butterflies. It's really kind of a cool thing. Um, I worked with a student recently, too, who had an idea. Um, she was supposed to solve a, a health problem um, using some kind of technology, and she, she chose 3D printing. And so her, her idea was those nurse call intercoms kept falling off the bed, and obviously patients can't, can't get them. So she wanted to design something in, uh, in 3D where they can hold those, those clips. Just curious, are you guys able to see the whole presentation? Or, okay, cool. Because I, I can't, I see a lot of video inside of it. So, um, but in the upper right hand corner, you can see sort of how that works. So, what's cool about this though, she came in and did a presentation, and you can see our three D printer that we're building is there on the on the on the bed. Um, the hospital that did this now wants to mass produce these things because they don't have them, and so that's kind of a neat thing. So she designed this, or we designed the prototype. She kept testing it, made sure it was okay to use. And once they found out that it worked very well, um, now they want to mass produce these things. So we're not only just coming up with ideas and, and printing out uh, some of our prototypes. Now we're looking at, wow, we might need to get into to the whole patent process. And so now we need to start thinking about that. If people come in and invent something on your, on your time or on, you know, using your resources, how do we do that? Um, and then down there at the bottom, you can see we've got, you know, um, we do hour of code and we, we have a coder dojo now where we have open houses and, and I've got great mentors that come in and work with these kids. And, uh, it's just, it's really fun to watch. Um, we also, I wrote a grant for the HoloLens and the Vive and we've got an Oculus Rift. So VR is really starting to take off. Um, and what's cool is I actually bring some of this stuff home and let my kids kind of, my youngest kids try it. Um, I've, got, I've got four kids, but the, the two younger ones really are interested in this stuff. Um, and the blue picture down there, that's the um, Meta VR. So we're actually getting um, a chance to kind of test other things. So there's a company called HD Interactive that does augmented reality and virtual reality apps. Um, and they, every once in a while, will give us this new technology because they want, they want our, our insight on it, which is cool. So we get to test all this stuff. And then another picture is me just kind of showing how you can do some really fun things using video cameras and scratch. So it's a little game where Legos fall down and you kind of have to catch them with your hand. It's kind of a fun thing, especially for kids. So they're secretly learning coding, basically, and, and how computers work and that kind of thing. Um, and then here's some more stuff of our coding initiatives, the hour of code that we do in our coder dojos. I always tell students, too, and, I, and their parents and, and faculty that I work with, that I'm not teaching these kids how to become computer programmers. A lot of them will probably never become computer programmers, but they're learning how to think like one, and they're learning how to, how to be cr uh, creative problem solvers and maybe think computationally. And if they get an error message on their computer screen, they might now be able to look at it and go, oh, I know what that means. I'm not just going to sit blankly at a computer screen and go, oh my God, my computer broke. I'm going to actually know a little bit more how it works behind the scenes. So that's Kind of the main theme here is to be able to learn the basics. You're not, you're not going to become necessarily a computer scientist or an engineer, but you're going to think like one. And I think down the road, that's going to help them with their, with their and professional lives. Adults and kids, not just the kids, by the way. Adults learn a lot from this too. And let's see. Oh, we all, I also worked with the engineering club. So you can see we bring all these different groups in and just give them a space to collaborate and, and play around. So we had the engineering club come in and they proposed, they wanted to build a drone and student government wouldn't give them the money to do it. And it was only like 200 bucks. And so I still had money left over from our, our uh, Curiosity Creates grant. So I said, hey, I'll give you guys the money to do this, but let's, let's just do it here and document everything so we can kind of show people 
that you can build your own, your own drone. And so we did. And then the student up there in the light blue shirt, he's actually the guy down there flying the drone. Um, we actually wrote a chapter in that book, the Makerspaces Live, whatever it's called, I can't read it. Um, we wrote a, a chapter uh, in that book. It was cool that they let me let a student actually co-write it with me. So I think that's a really good experience for that, for that kid. So he's not really a kid, but you know what I mean? I'm, I'm old. Um, and we also do a lot of events here. And the big one that's coming up is Maker, uh, Gulf Coast Maker and Comic-Con. Um, last year we had over 5,000 people show up and it's a comic book convention, but it's also a maker convention where we've got, you know, 3d printing and all this stuff and robotics and drones. And we're going to have Tesla cars here this year and, um, blacksmith, um, just all kinds of really oh, electric car races, a lot of cool stuff. Um, but we've also hosted, um, film screenings. Um, the most popular one that we did was The Wrecking Crew, which is now on, on Netflix. But we had, I flew the director out, uh, Denny Tedesco, and he was um, able to show up and um, kind of do an introduction to the film. We actually, we got the rights to the film and we brought it to an actual theater, which was really cool. And student government was able to give us the money for this. Um, it wasn't really that expensive either. And he came out in, in seconds. I wrote an email to him on a Friday afternoon thinking, oh, I'm just going to find out if he'll do this or not. And he, he did it. And then the other one there is, is uh, Daniel Wallace. He's written a bunch of books on Star Wars and, and, and other things. I sent out a tweet one day because we have a few of his books. One of his books is you press a button and this, the book kind of rises out of this, this thing. And he picked up on the tweet and was like, oh, my God, that's so cool. You bought that for the library. You know? And I said, hey, you want to come and speak about creative writing and all this? And he said, sure. And so I was able to get him to come out um, and just give him an honorarium. He came out and uh, we did a nice little lecture with Star Wars stuff hanging out. So that was really fun, really cool event. And I'm really proud of this one. We did, um, we had Echo Bridge Pictures come and they are a, a really kind of well-known animation studio in St. Petersburg where I live. And we did a character, um, um, design contest and Jaisha won and she was a St. Pete College student and what's really neat is she's she's now working for this group and she's been there for about two years now so I love that um, and she's living her dream now and she's always like oh thank you so much you connected us to this to this anime I'm like you know you're the one that has the talent you know I had the connection that's it you know she's she's the talented one so I think that's really kind of cool a um, couple other things, I get questions all the time like, well, what about the technology that sits there? We actually do circulate some of our technology now. So we've got this subscription called Hacker Boxes where every month we get a new kind of project to go through. And then we've got a bunch of uh, Arduino and Raspberry Pi kits that um, when we're not using them, I just kind of have them circulate so people can check them out and uh, take them home and kind of play around with them a little bit more. But I always ask them like, if you build something really cool, I, will, I would love for you to come back and do a little workshop. And a lot of times they do. And some of the academic projects that we're working on right now are pretty cool. I met with uh, an American history professor the other day. And the first thing he wants to do is, is do a 3D design and printing research project where we print out, um, you know, like for example, Abraham Lincoln, or we're gonna print out soldiers. And this one student actually wants to design, uh, redesign a battlefield and kind of do that presentation. Um, and we're also gonna be looking at uh, VR, doing virtual reality for history specifically. Um, that's pretty cool. I'm really excited about that because I asked my director if, it was, if it's okay if I take some of the book budget to buy some of these, a, these virtual reality apps and, and she said that that would be okay. And also a bunch of students are coming from their English classes this semester. Um, to do podcasts on National Poetry Month. So they're gonna read their favorite poem and we're gonna add music and sound effects and then hopefully get it played on the college radio station. So just some cool academic things that we're doing too that are, that are really fun and makes my job super interesting that I get to work with students and faculty on this. So, you know, big things can happen in small spaces. You know, we do not, again, we do not have a budget for this stuff. You just kind of gotta get an idea roll up your sleeves and just um, 
write those grants. And if you have fun, if you have some funding, that that's great, you know. And I, I wanted to put another link up here too that kind of walks through some of the other things um, on the innovation lab that we that we do. Um, I do have a bunch of presentations up on SlideShare. Um, I'm going to give Erica my slides for today too, so you can have those links. And I'm also on on Twitter too if you want to grab some stuff from there. I I post a lot of this kind of stuff on Twitter as well. Um, and my contact info should be on there. I don't know where it went. Let's see. Must have didn't stick. Um, you'll have my contact info too. I'll, I'll give. I'll make sure that slide is there when I give it to Erica. Um, the presentation. Now, one quick thing: if there's any questions, um, I, I'm here. I, there's a few like video things I wanted to show. Um, I'm not going to spend too much more time on this, but there's a couple things I'm really proud of. Um, we were in a in a book recently. Um, and you can see there's my kid again. He's, he's the tester of all this stuff. Um, lucky kid. But anyway, we're, we have a, um, a page in this new book. Um, it's called innovate Tampa Bay, I think, but you can see a little, um, what you call it there, a little, uh, augmented reality sticker that's on the page. And what's cool is when you, when you click on it, so this book has got an augmented reality part. So you go in, you use your phone or tablet, it scans that. And then a video pops up. So that's kind of cool. A video pops up. I'm sure you've seen that before. But we're lucky enough to actually have it. And what's cool is I'm actually meeting with the president of the college here pretty soon um, with my group of colleagues. But um, the other day she was here and I showed her this and she was blown away by it. And I was able to, luckily I was able to give her a copy of the book. Um, but it gives her a chance to see like, wow, you guys are really doing some cool stuff here. So, so again, that video pops up off the screen, which is kind of neat. Um, let's see. Oh, oh, here's the, the meta VR that we're testing. So just so you can kind of see it, this is just floating around um, and you can grab things like that world and just push it into your space. It looks way cooler when you um, have the headset on though. Um, but it's kind of neat. So it's kind of like the HoloLens um, where you can kind of interact with holograms and, and that kind of thing. So it's kind of neat that we actually get to test this. We don't own this one, but we get to test it, which is great. Very, very fun. Um, and then we get to play with the, with VR a lot. <clears throat> so this is our first kind of tilt brush thing where we got to go in and draw some stuff in, in here. Pretty fun. If you've never done it, it's, it's really, really fun. Um, oh, here's our, our drone. So it actually works. It's got a camera on it. So we put a GoPro camera on it as well. And it's one of those racing drones. So it's really fast and I can't fly it very well. I crash it very much too, too much. And we also did a, this is very long. Um, I can give you guys the link to this, but we actually, when we did our maker boot camp, we, put some money in to get a video camera and we had a videographer who actually went out and video recorded all of our workshops. And so we then had another workshop at the end where we did um, video editing. So I showed the kids how to edit video from their workshops. So we went in and we created this little documentary um, that shows the Maker Bootcamp, which is kind of neat. And it's narrated and all that. And there's our drone footage of the library. and. Uh, force you guys all to watch this but it's kind of neat it shows you know some action shots of us working with these kids so and there's one of our IT guys he does the game development workshop for us which is great our robotics so there's the library so this is another room that we use a lot for the robotic stuff because it's got wood floors and then talk to some parents about it so yeah really fun stuff and I also wanted to get into, I wanted to try it real quick. I mean, if you have questions, we can answer them. I just wanted to try one little experiment. Um, I've been Chad, we just so you know, we do have one question in the chat, but we can sure. hold off till you finish or if you want me no, to I can, I'll take it now. I'll, I'll okay. do it now. It says it's from Kristen and she's a high school librarian. She is struggling yep. with advertising through her students and staff. She mm. loves the name Innovation Lab because she feels like it appeals to older kids. Um, yeah. She sees that you have some younger kids, which gives her ideas on how to work with younger kids. But do your older kids utilize these workshops and programs? 
So yeah. she's at mostly younger. Um, I know that you're at a college, so you get college students as well. But what about those those older kids? Yeah, you know, we get the older kids. We're doing this hackathon, which is going to be at the at our Maker Boot Camp, or no, excuse me, it's going to be at the Gulf Coast Comic and MakerCon that we're doing next month, actually. And part of that's going to be a big hackathon, and that's that's including high school students too. Um, so that's great. And we're going to have two separate labs set up. One's going to be for app development and like programming and then one more for like animation and, and that kind of thing. So hopefully we're going to present them with like real world problems that they need to try to solve. And then they, they all get, they get prizes and stuff too. So, and we'll give them a rubric so they can, they can learn how we, how we grade things. But yeah, you know, I, most of the younger kids are the, the most interested really. Um, but I get, when I get the older kids, you know, they usually think, uh, I know everything, you know, but once they start to see this stuff, they're like, whoa, that's pretty cool. And then when you show them, you know, like here's virtual reality and they're like, wow, this is really cool. Then you could say, you know, there's a program called unity, for example, that if you learn this, you can create your own virtual reality. And I think that's when the light bulb goes off like, oh, you know, or you could be a video game developer. You know, they love to play video games. So, well, maybe start looking at the behind the scenes part of it. And I think that's when, when high school and middle school kids in general start to really, that little spark, that intellectual spark goes off at that point. And that's what I love about what I do here is, is that part of it. And the, that aha moment, you know? Yeah, any other, is there any other questions? She just asked again, can you use the word innovation in club program name somehow? And I say, yeah, of course. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that's, that's not copyrighted, I don't think. So. No, no. That's a funny story, though, because a while, a while ago I did my Comic-Con, and I, and I called it Pinellas Comic and Maker Fair, and I spelled it with an E. And a couple weeks go by, and then I get a, a, a letter from Make Magazine. And they're like, oh, you can't use the word fair. It's trademarked. I'm like, are you kidding? Really? I didn't know that. Yeah. <laughs> like, you, you can't, you can't, you, you can, they told me you can use that word, um, but you have to spend like, it was like literally, I think close to $500 to get the license to use them. I'm like, okay, first oh, off, wow. I'm not like in the corporate stuff like that. I'm like, nah, never mind. So I, I changed it to Maker Con. Mm -hmm. And that can't, I don't think that can be trademarked, right? So what's funny yeah. is, about two or three months go by and then they started doing maker cons and I was like they didn't take that idea from really? me I don't, I don't think they didn't but I was like that's just odd that they told me I can't use fair but then I switched to con and then they were like then months later they started using it maker con huh Which I've is got fine. To... go ahead oh no I have some more questions but finish your thought if you need to but yeah, no, innovation, you, yeah, that word's totally, totally doable. And <laughs> some people are like, oh, innovation's overused, that word. I'm like, I don't think it is because, you know, we're doing that here. Like people come in and they're like, oh, I want to design something. All right, here's, you know, an, a Tinkercad, which is free 3D design software. Why don't you design, like here's our, my son designed a fidget spinner, nice. 3D printer and skateboard bearings. And it's a different type of one, you know, it's, very different. It's not the typical fidget spinner, which is, it's so old to him now. He doesn't like it, but um, that's an innovation. He took the, the concept of fidget spinner and made it a little different, you know? Sure. So, yeah. Okay. But, um, I've got, oh, go yeah. ahead. No, go ahead. I'm ready for another question. Okay. We've got a few more coming through the chat. So I'm going to read off the ones people sent. Um, and if we have time at the end, which we'll see right now, we've got about 20 more minutes till two. I don't want to keep anyone too much past that. So we'll, okay. we might have more time for people to speak for themselves if they want to as well. Sure. Um, but I've got from Sharona, how do you get people to volunteer their time and skills? Do you offer any incentives or compensation in any way? I'm struggling to get people to participate as volunteers. Yeah, that's a good question. I mean, I really, I, I've, every once in a while, if, if they come in and do a really good one, I'll, I might take them to lunch. Um, normally though, I don't, there's not much that I can do. I think the main incentive is share your experience, you know, look at, watch people go, Oh wow, you can do that. You know? So I've been really lucky. Most people have come in and, and bought their time just because they enjoy this stuff and they like sharing their ideas. Um, but it, it can be tricky. It can be hard to get people to, to come in and volunteer. So, um, you know, uh, candy might work. I don't know. I really don't know. It's tough. 
free food's always good. <laughs> are people just turning you down or are they just um let's see if we can not back from Sharona. If you if Sharona, if you want to tune in via audio, if you have any input to that. I'm still watching her unmute. So we'll see. Up oh, there she is. Am, am I unmuted? You're now? in. You're yeah. unmuted. You're in. Okay. Feel free to continue your question. Yeah, I, I don't know. I just there's lots of people that will help out and then I can't get them to do it again. Or like people just don't seem to have time. Like they'll they'll be interested, but when it comes down to it, I can't get people to commit. Yeah. And Sh Sharana, what kind of space are you in out of curiosity? Um, so I'm at uh, State University of New York at Oswego Academic okay. Library. Um, so I'm trying to get students to volunteer. I'm trying to get faculty to volunteer their expertise. It just kind of seems like nobody has any time for it. Everybody's very busy. You know, the students have like classes and homework and jobs and extracurriculars and all kinds of stuff. And faculty always feel like they're very busy with things. So that's yeah. one of my biggest challenges is just getting people to agree to volunteer time really yeah um it you know everybody everybody is busy it's just how you structure your time you know, you know? yeah um but yeah no it's it's tough you'll, you'll find somebody um you know sometimes you can ask you can ask a professor hey do you have a, a sharp kid in there that that can come in and, and look for interns there's always people out there that need internship positions and i give them positions in here and i'm like just you know you, you pick something that you like if it's vr or whatever and then you know, really explore it and then share it with me or with the group, you know, mm -hmm. but definitely look at internships too, because they're getting, they're getting school credit and there's some incentive right there. Yeah. You know, so yeah. And then maybe let them take some of your stuff out and let them learn it, you know, kind of away from everything. And then they might feel more comfortable doing it. You know, I don't know. Yeah. I do have some stuff circulating. But. That's good. Yeah. I have a question for you as well. Sure. Um, I, I apologize. I had someone coming in and asking partway through the call about the 3D print running behind me. So okay. I off for a second, but I, I was overhearing some of the virtual reality conversation. Mm -hmm. um, I was curious, one of the things we're looking at right now is that as an institution, we have not yet made anything but free investments in virtual reality software. Mm -hmm. So I was curious what research you did into purchasing other equipment and or particularly software like Google Tilt, Tilt Brush um, mm -hmm. to move forward and make that investment because that's something I'm, one of my, my responsibilities is always having faculty buy-in before I can really move forward with something. Um, yeah. So I'm just curious about how you're making decisions, particularly about VR programs that you, you'll invest in as an institution and space. Yeah, what's what's interesting is for a while we the the rec center got a lot of they had a, a gentleman donate like ninety thousand dollars for equipment for technology and so they had a really powerful HTC Vive system. Mm -hmm. But what was great is they gave it to us. They were like, "Hey, we don't know how to use anything. Here's the I mean it was like four thousand dollars worth of I mean it was great, and they gave it to us. We had it close to a year and a half, and so. I started learning it and I fell in love with it. And then what I did is I took that thing on the road. Like I would bring it to faculty meetings and I would go, you know, Barnes and Noble has these mini, mini maker fairs and yeah. all these different events. People kept going, Oh, you guys, you, you, you have a V, you know, VR. And so I started bringing that out. Um, and then faculty started, seeing it. I'm like, and look, there's educational things. It's not just about gaming. Yeah. You know, there are educational, you know, ways to enhance education through this stuff. Mm -hmm. um, and like the, the fact that we're working with the American history professor on it now is, is pretty big. Um, so just getting it out there and letting them try it yeah. um, is huge. Um, and then the apps, I mean, there's a lot of good free stuff out there. Um, but like I said, I'm taking some of my book budget now because I can look at some books right now that are collecting some serious dust, mm -hmm. you know, which that's the nature of the beast, I guess. But mm -hmm. to be able to spend a similar amount, like maybe 40 bucks on a VR experience um that hundreds and hundreds of students are gonna definitely you know access and yeah. learn more from that's huge so i would try to find one or two faculty members and just see what they're interested in and work with them closely does that help that does i've i've that's i always find that um i've been trying to find those leaders in the community that are interested in adapting these things 
Mm-hmm. And I found that to be valuable, but I'm still, I'm still working towards adaption, particularly with 360 video and that kind of thing. But we've, we've been finding some good, good ways in to kind of get the equipment that we need that helps. Let's yeah. see. I've got another question okay. from Nick. Um, he asked, can you talk more about the AR code in the book? Also, what is the name of that book? The name of that book is Innovate Tampa Bay. Let me see if I can find it real quick. Innovate Tampa Bay book. Um, so here is the book. Now, Global Village is the publisher, and they, they created um, – this guy does global stuff, too. Um, all I did was record the video. Um, I don't know how they – encoded it. I mean, it's, it's sort of like a QR code, you know, they put that on the page. Um, we'll see if, oh, here it is. There's the book. What is all this other stuff here? Um, there we go. So there's the book. Looks like it's all there too. If I remember what page we were on, I would show it to you. I have no idea. There's the book. Um, so this is all like local kind of, um, Tampa Bay area, people that are doing, oh wait, we're close to my page, I think. I think we might get lucky. He also asked, what app does it require on a device if it requires specific? It's called Global Global Village. So if you go to Android or, or iPhone, um, that'll just kind of scan the, the app. So it looks like, uh, let's see where I put it. So it's just it's just one of these, I don't know if you can see that. So just it's like a QR code scanner. You see it scanning. Uh, we don't see the QR code. No, it's just like that red little scanner thing. It's oh, scanning okay. that. Oh, I've got you. <laughs> I don't know if I can do it here or not. Yeah, yeah but it's scanned the page and then got it. it'll open up the video. Yep. And all I do was was record the video. So, yeah. But the code behind the scenes, I I don't know. I think it's just the app that does most of it. Just kind of displays the video. Got it. Yeah. Now, speaking of 360 video, um, we do have a 360 camera. Um, and what was cool is our we have a school newspaper, the Sandbox, mm-hmm. and I let them borrow our 360 camera. So what they did is they went out to, we have a little nature preserve area on my campus, which is great. I get to walk out here all the time. It's a little boardwalk. And so what they did is they, um, it's kind of hard to see here. Let me see if it'll work. It's better when you have, but see, it's got the navigation, so you can yeah. actually walk around. Yep. So they went out and did a, a video, and it was narrated by one of our environmental science professors. Cool. It looks better when you have it on a like a Google Cardboard thing, you know. Yep. Um, we can put it in VR too, so so that's kind of neat. Um, if we have a second, where did I put? Yeah. It? Just time check, it's 151, so we have about nine more minutes. Two people tuned out, but said thank you very much. But we've okay. still got six people on, including you and I. <laughs> Four more cool. folks on. I was going to try, let's see, where did I put that? I think I might have already gotten rid of it. Um, I was going to show you the 360 video that I did in Facebook, but um, really, real quick, what you can do is when you're in Facebook, and hopefully nobody sends me something weird. Um, <laughs> you know how that all goes. So I'm going to go in here. I'm going to go into my page. By the way, do you guys see this? Yes. So this is a program. It's free. It's called OBS Video. And um, my camera is on there right now. So you guys can see me. And you can probably see me on two videos now, which is kind of weird, right? Yeah. <laughs> so you can see my screen. So this is the lab, and but see, that's not. This is the fish islands version of it. You don't see the 360. Mm-hmm. So a couple quick things: you go into Google or not Google. This is Facebook, and you go to live video, and then what we got to do is I click on connect, and then you have to go over here to settings in 360 video. You have to make sure there's a check for 360, and what it's going to do is going to give you this server address, and it's also gonna give you a key. So I'm gonna take this API key, I'm gonna copy it, and then I'm gonna go back into OBS. And if you ever need instructions on this, I'll be happy to walk you through it again. So then I go to File and Settings, and then I pick 
uh, the streaming settings here. I've already got the URL for the Facebook streaming server. I'm gonna put the new streaming key in. So there's the new key that we just got from Facebook. Then I hit apply. And this may or may not work because I've had the camera running. Sometimes it's, it's weird. So now what I'm gonna do is, let me move this a little bit. I'm gonna click on start streaming. So now since that key is in OBS, it should route it through Facebook. So now if I go to Facebook and click on post, it's fetching the video stream now. Hopefully it works, let's see. Takes a minute. Okay, so here is, now what's interesting about this, the other day I did a, a practice one, yep. and I had my Spotify playing, and it was actually routed through OBS, so it sounded really good. And um, people would come out, and you know, I, it, there was a lot of latency on my side, right? Mm -hmm. So now if I go in here, what's cool about this is you can now, now it's redoing my voice. Let's see, Let's um, see how I'm moving around in real time in yep. the lab. And you know, I guess there's a lot of latency on my side. Right? Now, can I now like go in here? What's cool about this is so there's latency, now, but now, when you're viewing it on a camera or not a camera, a phone, it's real time and it looks great, and people can move around, you know, like like this in the video and and move around the room. Um, and then after you do it in after you do it in uh, Facebook Live, it records the video, and then it's a pretty good good deal. Um, I could do this. Let me take this out real quick. But that's all you do. You just you use OBS Studio. You grab that Facebook 360 API key, and that's all you got to do. And then it, when it works, it works. Let me see something real quick. Let me find. Have you, Chad, have you used that? Um, what have you used that for so far? Say live streaming a workshop or what applications have you seen used for that kind of? Just to kind of show off um, uh -huh. 360 what we're doing. Got it. So you're not just looking at me in 2D. You can kind of navigate around. We've done the, the nature preserve narrated video, which was kind of neat because then you can you know, you got narration, but you can go look around all and see all the different plants and stuff, you know? Um, so let me see if I can find this real quick. So the video that I did, let's see. Oh, there's my little, I've been struggling with trying to get a stand for my Rico, which is what I'm using right now. Um, and I was gonna 3D print something and I was like, oh, I have a mic stand and the mic stand worked beautifully. Huh. It's weird because you, you see the USB connector there? At the bottom. Mm -hmm. you, you can't put a tripod in there. Yep. It just doesn't work because it's too big. Oh, here we go. So here's the video that I did. So if I hit, you should be able to hear Miles Davis. Mm -hmm. Now this is my office. It's really slow right now because we're streaming my video. Yeah, it's, and it's a lot of streaming all at once. <laughs> yeah, but I will just, what's cool about this, and if you guys ever want, you can always send me a friend request in Facebook and, we, and I can show you this solo if you want, you know? Because um, I can see you guys friends now, we, you know, we know each other now. But um, what's cool about this, there's my messy office. When it, when, when other people are viewing it, when it's not going all through my computer, right? Because all the processing is going through my computer in real time. When it's not going through my computer, um, it's, it works really well. But it's kind of neat how you can kind of look around and see the whole room. And then when it's a video, it's all real time. Yeah, that's awesome. All right, we have about three minutes left. Um, okay. So if it's cool, I want to open it up if anyone wants to actually ask questions using audio um, yeah. and just see if we get anyone uh, for sure. the last three minutes. Okay. Uh, I know, like I said, this a few folks who were had to tune already. Thank you for doing this. So just wanted to bring that up again. But if any mm -hmm. of you guys have any questions who are still on the call, feel free to unmute yourself. I don't see anyone unmuting, but if you do, unmute, ask a question. We're here to answer them. Uh, or Chad's really here to answer them. I'm just here to support. 
to see if anyone decides to do so. Or if you have trouble with the technology, feel free to message on chat. And if you can figure out where that is at the bottom, um, looks like we have at least Nick, are you on? Yep, I'm here. All right, mm -hmm. do you have a question? Yeah, I, uh, I oh. had to step away during the uh, VR um, part. What, mm -hmm. uh, what hardware are you using for the Meta? Um, is it the Meta 1 or the Meta 2? It's the, the Meta 2. Meta 2? Okay. Yeah. We actually went out. Uh, that's another thing. It's difficult to buy a computer that the college doesn't license or doesn't lease. So I was able to get uh, an Alienware machine, which is one of the, the console versions of the Alienware. Um, it works pretty well, but I ended up buying an accelerator graphics thing for it too, which seems to work pretty well. But we have to switch between that same machine for the Meta VR. We've got a HoloLens too. I like the HoloLens because it does all the processing in the in the headset. And yeah, personally, I just don't like wearing the big headset though. Just, you know. But yeah, so the Alienware has been running it pretty well, knock on wood, right now. So, yeah. You guys doing? Are you doing VR there? Yeah, we we have quite a bit of it. Um, nice. I bought the Meta One when it first came out, and it was. Clunky? Yeah, at best. Yeah. Uh, and then we've had the Oculus DK2 and then the newest Oculus and then the HTC Vive um, and the HoloLens. Um, oh, cool. So, been a lot of fun. The HoloLens has been a big hit. Yeah, um, the HoloLens is fun. My favorite, though, is the Vive. I love the Vive. I love the Vive. We, we, uh, we take a lot of the stuff out to parks and schools and stuff, and so... Mm -hmm. The, the Vive has lived in-house only, and the Oculus has been our mobile device because it's a lot it's a lot cleaner to set up yeah, yeah. Um, outreach events because um, we can take the Alienware laptop with the, an Oculus, and we don't have to worry about like positioning a whole bunch of things, but yeah. I do not like the Vive a lot. Yeah, I do too. But yeah, they're all, they all have their own, little, their own little deal. You know, it's pretty cool. Pretty soon we'll have glasses on and we'll connect through Bluetooth on our phones and that's, that's going to be it. We're not going to have these big clunky things on, you know? Yeah. Let's hope so. That's what yeah. the beauty of the HoloLens, right? Yeah. Yep. Exactly. Cool. Yeah. Well, connect with me on Facebook, guys. And I'm going to give um, Erica my presentation uh, that has my, my other contact info if you guys don't use Facebook or not. But um, I'll send that to you, if not later today, tomorrow morning. Yeah, that sounds good. <laughs> and yeah. um, I'll message everyone through the Google group with uh, the links as I get them. So you guys can access them right through there. Um, and if you have any questions, you know where to reach Amy and I, who are the two folks organizing these. Um, you can always reach us through email. And thank you, Chad, so much for taking thank you. an hour of your time down in Florida to present to us. We really appreciate it. I appreciate it. It's fun. <laughs> I love this stuff. Yeah, and um, if anyone, as obviously, um, if you need Chad's contact, we got a thank you from Nick. Um, we can we can get that Thanks, to guys. you guys should you want it. Perfect. All right, and uh, I'll be posting this video to YouTube. We'll say goodbye to everyone, um, and if you ever have any questions, you know where to find us. Uh, thanks again, Chad, and this thank is you. awesome. Awesome. Hey, thanks, guys. Have a great weekend. Thanks. You too. Take care.